two-handed Scottish claymore sword, wielded by the inventor's Highland ancestors to carve a path through invading enemies. The mine, as it exists today, was used with lethal effectiveness in Vietnam, and special forces carry a mini version of it on missions. Our hope is that this book will be as simple and instructive as those raised letters, that this book, like the Claymore Sword, will help cleave through the obstacles that stand in front of you. We also hope that humor is just as effective a weapon and that you can laugh along the way. Rob. Over the years that I was with the SEAL teams, I developed some perspectives on how to live life, which is to say, how to avoid being killed over the course of more than 400 missions. They're not complicated, and they're easy to remember. Keep it simple. Follow the rules. Don't get sloppy. Do the best you can until you're finished, and then move on and don't look back. Face your adversary. Front toward enemy. I was introduced to Claymores during the land warfare phase of basic underwater demolition SEAL training, or BUDS. We read about them during classroom training, we had tests on them, and we practiced with them on San Clemente Island using inert claymores. The dummy claymores had blue plastic cases, which made them easy to distinguish from the live versions, which were all of drab. Before I got my trident, the team sent me off for a 13-week course called SEAL Tactical Training, or STT, around April 1997. After three weeks of dive training in Puerto Rico, we spent the rest of the time at Fort A.P. Hill in Northern Virginia. This consisted of all parts of land warfare, map and compass navigation, patrolling, shooting every weapon available to SEALs, as well as explosives training. A master chief named Frank Wagner ran the whole thing. He was a Vietnam vet, and his nickname was Pig. I have no idea why Master Chief Wagner was called Pig, but I do know this. He ran the place exactly how he wanted it. Early on in the explosives demolition course, maybe on the first day, he brought us into one of the classrooms where he had us open up claymores. He demonstrated with a flathead screwdriver how you pry off the cover to look inside. We looked closely at the honeycomb of steel balls, the layer of C4 behind it, the detonator wells, the side on top. Then he ordered us out to the live range. The range was the area at the fort where live explosives were set off. Parts were wooded, other parts were open field and brush. He gathered the 40 or 50 dudes there for the course around him in one of the open areas. Then he reached into his pocket and took out a block of C4. He cut it in two, handed one lump to me and another to a second student, and gave us both lighters. Then he told us to set them on fire. Now, I had worked with Claymores in C4 before, back in BUDS training. One of the first things you learn about C4 is that it's completely harmless without a rapid release of energy, such as a blasting cap. It looks like white Play-Doh and has the consistency of taffy, and it's about as dangerous, as long as there's no blasting charge to ignite it. You can cut it, you can pound it, drop it, mold it into whatever shape you choose, and it won't explode. Likewise, everyone knows that if you set C4 on fire, nothing will happen. So this other dude and I stood there with a C4 in one hand and a lighter in the other, and Pig Wagner ordered us to put the flame to the C4. So I swallowed hard, spun the strike wheel to get a flame, and after a count of three, put the flame to the C4. Pig Wagner didn't seem like a funny guy. He was kind of a hard ass, and he didn't mind making us do things that were probably against the rules. We didn't think he had a sense of humor. As it turned out, he very much had a sense of humor. The other thing he had was a wireless detonator in his pocket, which was linked to a receiver connected to a five-pound charge of C4 that he had put on the ground about 200 yards away, hidden by some trees. When I put the flame to the C4, he pushed the button at the same moment. That motherfucker blew as loud as an artillery shell. Of course, no one expected this. The more collected guys just whipped their heads towards the trees. Others bolted, thinking the explosion was at their feet. Some hit the ground. Pig Wagner, naturally, thought this was the funniest thing he'd seen since the last time he did this to a bunch of new SEAL candidates. He laughed his ass off, then gave us five minutes to go change our shit-stained shorts and get back out on the range. Dakota. We have a saying in the Marine Corps, an ethos that we live by.